The Sixth Amendment to the United States Constitution provides that in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to have the assistance of counsel. The Sixth Amendment safeguards the dignity of the individual when confronted with the power of the state. No one should stand alone when accused of a crime. An effective legal advocate protects the innocent and ensures that even for those who have broken the law, a low point in a person's life will not necessarily define the rest of that life. I have an extraordinary opportunity to seize this moment of unprecedented bipartisan support for criminal justice reform. And we have outstanding leadership and momentum among the many organizations you in this room represent and here in the Department of Justice to make the promise of the Supreme Court's landmark decision in Gideon v. Wainwright attainable. And it starts with all of you. So this is, this is what we're looking at in Michigan, is trying to develop a system of state-mandated standards to allow, allow each local system to rise to a level of competency. It's ensuring that no person faces the loss of liberty without the aid of a lawyer who has the time, resources, and ability to present a defense. Too many public defenders crushing caseloads and scarce resources make it impossible to adequately represent clients who need and deserve assistance in legal matters. You need an injunction from a federal judge to inspire uh, a governmental agency in the executive or legislative branch to step up and do what needs to be done. You know, to me, a key agenda item that I would think this group should be talking about is whether the responsibility for funding injured defense rests with the state or rests with counties. We found in our state that almost 90% of indigent defense was funded by counties who are underfunded and lack the cap capacity and the capability to handle this. If you do research, you will find that the state has that responsibility first and foremost, and it continues to amaze me that there are no cases filed that raise that question. But we know that the solutions are going to be different. And so, unlike for some of the other initiatives where we have pretrial and we have risk assessment, we kind of know our solution, this one is gonna take us a little more work to come up with the solution. And the solutions are gonna be different. But that's what you all are gonna help us do. And as every jurisdiction looks at their problem and we figure a solution, we will help you implement that solution. Each county should remain free to choose its indigent defense delivery model. We think that's critical because every county is different. This is not a cookie cutter operation. And so it needs to respect the local decision making that's necessary. Somewhere between 70 and 100 million Americans have a criminal record of some kind, which means between a quarter and a third of us. And if there's a 25 or 30% chance that an American citizen is gonna come into contact with the criminal courts, then providing for a skilled, well-resourced, well-trained, well-respected public defender cannot be an afterthought. We have a lot of work to do at ensuring that even as we talk about sentencing reform, as we talk about fines and fees, as we talk about bail, that we don't lose sight of the very important place that right to counsel actually occupies in the broader systemic reform. How many of you in this room are lawyers? Now, if you are a lawyer, okay, who has nothing to do with criminal justice, raise your hand. Therein lies one of the great secrets to reform. You have got to be willing to reach out to the rest of the profession. I think transparency helps a heck of a lot because most of us in elective office don't really know. I think instead of judge and the ABA having principles about the council being independent, it ought to be a rule instead of a principle. We want to be part of this conversation, and we want to add to um, sort of the, the public awareness and uh, in many situations the reform that's ongoing. Lady Justice is blind for a reason. She's not supposed to see people of color brown, red, yellow, black, white. She's not supposed to see anything. She's supposed to balance the scale. We should not have defense of those that have been charged and deprived of liberty depending on where their zip code is. Families whose loved ones are facing charges come and meet 
on a weekly basis and see how they can engage and partner with the public defender, not just on policy issues, but on individual cases, so that we could actualize that right to counsel to keep people free. And I know that we can all do it, and it may be judge, prosecutor, and defense attorney one at a time, but we can do it. Thank you.